if we can go over a few minutes, perhaps we could get the speakers to come up to the front here and, and we can just run a bit of a Q&A session. Um, while they come up, um, I have to put in a bit of an advertisement. Um, the Australian Committee for IUCN addressed the issue of innovation a couple of years ago and um, held a symposium on the topic in Adelaide. And there's a publication that emerged from that symposium. If you go to the Australian Committee .org.au site, aciucn.org.au, there's a quite substantial publication, so perhaps some of you will be interested to see that. So, I'm going to use the Chair's prerogative to get the ball rolling. <laughs> yeah. um, this one here. Um, and my question's for you, Nick. Um, you, well, one of the first things you mentioned was um, innovation in respect of governance and it occurs to me that innovation requires people to have the, uh, the space to conceive of new approaches and the opportunity to apply those new approaches and I wonder if in your experience whether particular governance models are more or less amenable to supporting that sort of innovation. example uh, that would fit that. Um, but, but when we speak of governance, uh, it, it is this decision-making uh, structure that makes, makes a difference. And whether it's uh, the final uh, answer is in the minister's hands, uh, the governance really happens if there's a full engagement <coughs> And for example, the Galapagos example that we heard today is this focus now on people. It is the issue that transcends whatever governance model you have. You have to have that involvement of people in the process of decision making. The final decision may be in the hands of the local or indigenous community uh, who owns the property or the minister, uh, but it is the people who are engaged in that process of governance that really determine the outcome, frankly. I'll use my um, prerogative. Any questions, comments from the floor? Actually, it was a question for, for Nick and, and anyone else. Um, <laughs> Some of the the experiences we have in the cab in terms of devolution of authority for, for management to, um, in one case, municipalities, but also to a, a lot of NGOs um, and the collaborative arrangements um, that drive that. And we have heard of cases in terms of the connectivity conservation experiences. Um, and those seem to have gone in a number of directions um, and based on where in that mix is not so much about the management, but in terms of the engagement. Is the, and it doesn't seem as if in most cases the, in, the engagement strategy is designed on the front end, and, and that seems to affect outcomes very easily. Not so much the co-management aspect, but the, the, the community engagement aspect. And I just wondered if people had case studies or examples that they could share, um, or had some ideas about this. Well, I think um, um, in the Galapagos we had, um, with the Marine Reserve, a history of um, evolving uh, in, in, in participation to the level of decision making. Because you can have participation at you know, different levels, but um, at this moment um, there is a local, um, local council um, that represents uh, stakeholders from the tourism industry, fishermen, um, the, um, the naturalist guides, uh, which believe it or not represent a, an important group, and MVTs from the fisheries department. And the decisions are, uh, they have to be a, a unanimous consensus decision. And about, there's a publication uh, that came about three, four years ago 
on the 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 success of, of this level of, of decision making. And if uh, very few of those uh, round tables of decision making um, didn't agree with something, and then it had to go up a high level as another state. Uh, stage of, of decision making, which is at ministerial level. So at the local level, they don't decide, ministers will decide. So it has been a quite an interesting tool uh, because most of the decisions have been agreed on, on the ground. Um, so I wanted to just um, give an, an example of that. Thanks, Sergio. You already had a question up the back there. I, I just wanted to make a comment actually um, about in terms of governance because I went to the um, value and accounting um, seminar this morning and um, trying to get a perspective on um, val getting a, a value at, um, measure of people using parks and one of the um, gentlemen at the front actually just made the comment saying that um, if you bring the community into the conversation then the government will follow and I thought that that was um, really good in terms of um, adding value to the park system and then uh, maybe promoting um, governance as a product of that. Thank you. Another question? Sorry, what's up there? You, you're in possession of the microphone. I am, but I'm not going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it down here? Thank you. Um, I want just maybe to ask, uh, Arturo, I also come from a similar region in the Galapagos. And just maybe um, on, the, on the way that uh, the management plan was organized and the, you know, the innovations they developed, uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on the context also of the country in terms of the innovation, on the legal innovations that has been created, this issue of when we build, which is a kind of concept that comes from even an indigenous background, different from the cultural background that most of the people in the Galapagos have. So because now the plan is in terms of when we build rather than nature or just conservation, and for me, that's like kind of like a change of paradigm in, in comparison to what uh, Dr. Uh, well, you, you, were, you were explaining about nature as the priority. And you know that maybe in the Galapagos, you, put, you, you, say, you say that, you use that kind of discourse, it will generate this conflict because there's a history of, of putting that in, in, in the first, uh, as, as the first priority, while this concept of this paradigm of WMBB is changing it. And, more holistic and it gives rise to nature, but of course it puts also social justice in, in the core. So could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah. Well, the, the, um, the process itself uh, where you invite the decision makers of the area, um, municipalities for example, which are, which are um, elected by the people, and they are uh, politicians pretty much, and they decide uh, a lot of the things that takes place in the development of urban areas and sometimes in the rural areas. Um, so this sort of bringing them in uh, at the beginning of the process, uh, bringing them in in the sense of identifying what's the vision for that protected area, in, the case, in this case Galapagos and the marine reserve, you know, the, the park and the marine reserve. So that is something that uh, uh, it's been seen um, in the mainland, the Ministry of, of Environment, uh, as a process that can be followed. The management effectiveness evaluation is another of the tools that we used and it needs to be strengthened. They, they are looking at, at you know, evaluation of management effectiveness and in the process of engaging um, local stakeholders, decision makers, make it makes it easier for the implementation of, of the plan uh, later on. So that's, that's more or less the, the line that has been picked up in the, the mechanism. Any observations from elsewhere on the panel? It's not compulsory. Here's another one. <laughs> uh, a question for Antonio. Um, we've got a very similar project to yours, but not nearly as sexy. It's not in the Amazon. It's just north of Sydney in um, quite an urbanised area. We have a system of 70 reserves where we've now set up well over a hundred permanent sites and done baseline monitoring. All that raw data is online, the results are online. Um, we're now in the position of trying to attract researchers to those sites with the same idea that you have. Do you have any tips for how you advertise people to come to your area to do research? 
Um, some helpful advice. Sorry, because in Brazil, Brazil have terrible English. What's your name? Subject. 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 Of course, of course. Uh, what's your name? Sorry. Lisa. Lisa. Uh, when I when I presented the three strategies, the first one was to invest in support research in terms of logistics, in terms uh, not just for reduced costs. <laughs> but to increase quality of service. Uh, the colleague told that, uh, from Galapagos told, that, uh, told us that we don't, have, we don't make research, we support research. And that's our philosophy. So in Amazon, I don't know I hear the, in your reality, but in Amazon region, it's a very expensive to, it's very expensive to, to, to put people in, in the field and to find uh, good support staff and, and not have delays all the time we have delays we have a circle, how can I say that when you suspend uh, an activity uh, we have a lot of logistical problems so the first time, the first thing we, we, we say we, 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 we've done what we, we did was to <coughs> have a, a very strong logistics. I don't know here about your, your situation, but in, in Amazon it's a very it's the biggest challenge to, to support of quality, uh, how can I say, avoiding problems, logistical problems. So the, 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 the most important thing was that people, in, to, to conclude, people in Amazon, researchers in Amazon, they have a joke, a, a great joke for us, that they say Virua is like a Switzerland of the Amazon, and for us it's a a very uh, great situation to to hear to hear it, because uh, when researchers go to Virua, they know that it will work. So that's our main tip for you: is to have a very good uh, supporting quality and in, in terms of logistics. Much more than inviting people, uh, publicizing our our potential. Much more than that is the practical thing, the practical uh, action of support with quality. I think. Well, that's a good tip. <laughs> Got a new <laughs> word. Very hard, hard, right. very hard one. It's a yeah. practical term. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Here's another. Um, my question was for, for Mick. Um, in your presentation, you made a comment that um, I'll just move away from the speaker. You made a comment that um, you could see park management and protected area management being devolved down from governments, and and you had phrased it in a way that it sounded like you weren't supportive of that devolvement of that responsibility. But what I hear and what I'm seeing from this Congress is that in fact it's the involvement and that devolvement of responsibility for park management, that it's the real innovation in terms of protected area um, protection. I didn't mean it in the context of, of negative, uh, I meant it in the context of the trend, and the trend is, is positive if the resources come with that devolution. If uh, the, the resources are locked up with the government and they say, well, you can now manage it and give you no resources, well, that's a very bad trend. Oh, I'm sorry, so we've overstayed the welcome and, and Nick has to go, so perhaps we, we should wind it up there and, um, and I'll just invite you all to have a big round of applause for our excellent <laughs> Thank you very much contributions today. Thank you all for your interest and your contributions as well and I hope you've gone away today with a head full of bright ideas. I know I have. I'm going to talk to Jane about how to get more money and I'm going to talk to Antonio about research so um, they can't go yet. But you can. So thank you very much. <laughs>